Welcome to Happy Crappy Paints, part 15, where I paint the pirates uh, for the Conan game by Monolith. We're going to do two variants of the pirates, one with a blue vest and uh, one with a green vest. True to the theme of these videos, we're going to take a few shortcuts in terms of uh, level of highlights we're going to do and the level of details we're going to add. But let's start from the beginning by the primer. I'm going to use a white primer. And uh, for the skin tone, we're going to use Kislev Flash. Use a very thinned Kislev Flash and apply two or three layers. Um, especially when it comes to the front area of the mini, around the chest and the necklaces, there's lots of details there that uh, will get lost if uh, you do not thin your your paint. Um, so make sure you thin your paint and and add two layers. We are going to use a wash as well, and the wash will also darken the skin tone a little bit. So. Um, you don't have to apply a, a very thick layer of the skin tone. As you can see here, I'm avoiding painting the hair and also the bracelets uh, with the skin tone. You don't have to worry, uh, you're going to paint over that with um, highlights later. So you don't have to be as careful as I am here not to paint over the, the bracelets or the armbands or the hair even. Here I'm applying the second layer of the skin tone. Here's a progress shot of where we are at the moment. Um, this also is a, a time where I want to emphasize, emphasize the importance of using a wet palette to make sure that the paint actually stays at the consistency you'd like when you're painting many minis. Uh, Mephiston Red is the color that we're going to use for the uh, pants, for the pirates, for all of them. You could do variations here and use uh, Rust Grey and the Drakenhof Nightshade Wash to create blue pads. Uh, the same um, uh, technique that we're going to use for the blue vests. You can use these for for a few of the pants if you'd like um, to create some variation between them. I decided not to for uh, speed reasons.
here's another reason for using a wet palette corrections uh, you can very easily go back to using the same paint again as you've done a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago or even hours ago to do corrections okay here we are with another progress shot I took, I took a pause here uh, actually for a few days before I continued due to other commitments that I had so apologize for that it's taken a little while to get these video this video crea uh, done uh, Lauren Forest is the um, green color used for the cloth around the pirates waist I decided here to not let the cloth wrap around the belt uh, you will see uh, that I, I decided to paint that silver a little bit later but uh, the the intention of the designer of the model is that the green cloth will wrap around the belt uh, around where the belt buckle is almost you can see there's some detail there that uh, is the cloth being wrapped around the belt um, that's certainly something that uh, you can decide to, to honor uh, you don't have to interpret the model as I did um, and if you do um, paint, gr paint green across the belt on the front of the mini to the right of the where the belt comes down and hangs down you can also see that there are some uh, knots or ties or, uh, where the uh, the bottom part of the breeches are tied together I decided to use green for those as well um, I would suggest um, I started like you saw to paint all of the green at once with the same size brush I decided to switch technique and use a, a larger brush for the larger portions of the green for all of the minis and then go back with a 5-0 brush to do the edges of the top part of the belt uh, uh, instead that I found that much easier and much faster um, it required quite a bit of concentration to get these parts correct or without having to do corrections and making no errors or mistakes with that large brush okay moving on to the belt Mornfang Brown um, uh, this is the area right there that you should paint green that's where the uh, green cloth wraps around the belt uh, but I'm using Mornfang brown for all of the belt and uh, the leather pouch uh, that's hanging on off of his belt it's probably a coin purse and then uh, the uh, bag that also hangs off his, his uh, left hip Morn Mornfang for all of it Here you can also see an example of how important it is to hold your fingers in your hand very close to the tip of the brush when you're painting very detailed uh, or small small details of the mini. Uh, the, the closer to the actual brush you're holding your fingertips, the more control you have of your brush. Um, so that's certainly a, a great tip. And also lean your right hand if you're right-handed onto your left hand when painting these small things. You can see that I'm leaning fingers against the base of the mini to uh, minimize hand shaking. A larger brush carry more paint than a smaller brush so it is a good idea to paint even small details with a larger brush. And this is a technique you can use like twisting the brush as you're pulling it out of the paint to create a very sharp tip so you can actually do small details with a larger brush. We're going to do two variants of the vest like I mentioned before a green and blue version. Uh, we're going to use Elysian gray green uh, quite thinned for the, gre the, the green vest
going to use Ross Gray for the blue vest. Ross Gray is a great paint to use to represent a um, uh, blue actually blue cloth or blue paint on wood like if you're painting shields for other other uh, games for example and then you can use a blue shade to to bring out uh, a, a bluer tint but rust gray is an, is an awesome color for for getting blue cloth in my mind Time to do the swords, so uh, Runefang Steel is what we're going to use for that. Now we're getting a, a new color that we haven't used in this series before. Fulgrit Copper. Decided to use that for the armband and also for the the details on the swords. The um, uh, card th that's used in the river for the game uh, sh show that it should should be a gold uh, color. So if you have a metallic gold or if you want to mix gold like we've done previously in the series uh, you could use that as well. But I wanted to try a, a very very bright coppery metallic uh, for this and see how it turned out and I'm quite happy with it actually. Um, and for for speed reasons, I'm using the same color for for more than one detail. Uh, so I could, if you'd like, you could just do the armband and, and this copper look, and then just gold for uh, the swords. Um, but I decided to use it on all of them. We're ready to um, apply our first wash. We do that on the pants. So, Caribou Crimson, uh, which is the the, r the red wash that uh, we've used many times before in this series. Uh, be uh, liberal when using this. Use a lot. We're going to highlight the uh, the pants back up again. So we want to make sure that we do get quite dark shadows on the pants. Washing goes quick and uh, this is one of my favorite steps when when painting because this is when you get you get to see the how the end product is going to look like when you're done. Um, Going to use Seraphim Sepia as the flesh shade to uh, to let the pirates be more of a sunburnt dark skin tone rather than a pinkish red skin tone like uh, the other flesh uh, like actual flesh shades uh, will give sometimes. When you add the this wash, make sure you that you add plenty at the edges between the vest and the skin around his arms there so that you create a, a nice contour so make sure that it pulls nicely uh, at the edges This is how, how it looks before highlighting in details. Drakenhof Nightshade 
is the uh, wash we're going to use for the blue vest. For the green vest, we're using Ethonian Camo Shade. When applying the green wash to the green cloth around the belt, don't worry getting the green on the belt or even the bags because the green actually brings out a nice tint in the in the brown leather actually uh, so don't worry about that at all adding null oil to the uh, metal of the swords You could actually apply more than one layer of, of the null oil. I decided to do one layer, um, but you will see soon when I highlight the edge of the sword back up again, uh, that one layer of null oil mm, does not sufficiently darken the metal. Here's a progress shot before continuing with highlights and details. First highlight is bringing the skin tone back up again on the raised area. So adding some Kislev flash uh, to uh, the skin. Again, like for all of these uh, in the in this series, you should really consider adding a second highlight where you add white to Kislev for the very raised portions of the minis. But for this series, we we only apply white one level of highlight for, s for speed reasons and it, it looks perfectly fine with just one la layer of highlight. Uh, so I decided to, to do that and uh, um, uh, I think you, you could as well. But if you'd like, you, you could certainly make the mini pop a little more by uh, adding a, a brighter shade of the skin tone to the top of the head, top of the shoulders, um, and maybe the knuckles on his hands, around the thumbs and so on, the toes of his feet and so on. Also add the a little bit of Kislev to the nose and the cheekbones. Like you've probably seen already, we're not going to paint the eyes. Um, this is something that I decided to do due to uh, speed reasons really and I, I didn't really think it mattered much, but uh, it's something that you certainly can do. Mephiston Red. Uh, using the same color of red for the as when we did the pants to bring the highlights of the pants up again. When highlighting the edge of the sword back up, Necron compound can be used, but it's certainly very, very optional. You could just use a rune fang steel and do using a normal dry brushing technique. Necron compound is basically rune fang steel, but in a dry brush consistency. Uh, so it's very optional. So don't worry if you don't have Necron compound. And here you can also see that I should probably have used two layers of null oil for the swords make the contrast of the edge and to the blade greater. Abaddon black and ashen grey mixing in that 50-50 um, for the hair. This is what 
you know, we did for Conan and the other um, black-haired characters. I really recommend mixing Abaddon with Grey uh, at a 50-50 mix when painting hair. That adds texture and depth to the hair because it gives you the opportunity to use null oil to shade to shade black. Um, pure Abaddon for the necklace, the top necklace. Um, don't do what I did here and paint the hair and the necklace at the same time. I thought I was going to be smart and put both of them in the vet palette and, uh, and do them interchangeably, but uh, that was just a hassle. Um, the necklaces in in general was very difficult to do, actually. I found them very hard to do. Um, so I do suggest do the hair first and then go in uh, for the eyebrows a little tuft on top of his head and also a little bit on his chin so that's how it looks when the hair and the eyebrows and the beard and then do the necklaces I decided to do the top necklace in Abaddon Black and the bottom one using Rhinox Hide you can certainly use Abaddon Black for both necklaces or or Rhinox Hide for both. You can't really tell the difference uh, when you're looking at them, you need that one is brown and one is black. It looked like they were two different colors on the on the uh, card, the river cards, that's why the reason why I did it, but it's certainly not necessary. This I actually had to pause, I had to take a couple of breaks. Um, I had a hard time finding the concentration to to do this so that it looked good um, for the necklaces. I used the armbands, I decided even though they are metal, gold or uh, on the card, I decided to I decided that it was going to look more interesting if I I um, broke the, that with um, leather instead. Uh, screaming Skull is for the tooth on the in the necklace. There's one tooth in the on the shoker necklace and one on the longer one. So two two teeth in his necklace. Rune Fang steel to add some metal pieces to the necklace. Uh, the big uh, coin shaped thing to the left should probably be gold but I decided that wouldn't actually show and look good. So I, I want it to be Rune Fang steel. And also to add a couple of dabs on the necklace to add some detail to to as well. And then Rune Fang steel for the belt as well. And here I also did a variant of the bracelet in Rune Fang to see how that looked. And it looked okay. But I thought it uh, uh, it looked better actually with brown so that it would have been leather. For the um, left bracelet using Temple Guard Blue to make it uh, look like uh, 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 like jewels almost like a jeweled bracelet highlighting the belt and the pouch the uh, the bag and the coin pouch with XV88 so add a little of that to the top of the belt and the raised portions of the coin purse And uh, now we're done. You could here, like I said before, also paint the eyes. I decided not to. Uh, I wanted to be fi finalized and done with the pirates. And uh, uh, they look, I think they look good, ev even though you I didn't paint the eyes. But uh, that's it. Uh, here you can see the two different options. 
also with the bracelet and medal to the left. Thanks for watching.